Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have an interesting misfire case study. 2008 Pontiac G5 2.2 Ecotech, 244,000 miles, and the story was, I don't know, the owner, she got it from her relatives, it ran great for like two weeks, and then started acting up. So, um, basically, she said it idle, it's shaking, you can feel it, on the highway seems fine. On misfire data, cylinder four, pretty consistently misfiring. Now we see all new coils, all new spark plugs, I checked those, played some Swaptronics, no difference. So if it was spark plugs or coils, it wouldn't be, probably wouldn't be worth making a video. But this is more interesting. So it feels kind of like fish bite misfire, not a constant misfire at idle like you would see with like a burnt exhaust valve, for example. But let's take it for a test drive. It's important to get some data under load too, and then we'll see where this goes. Let's listen to the tailpipe. Boom. Right there. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. The RPMs are kind of going up and down. It looks like cylinder four. What's the deal? All right, got to the road here. Now it's in gear, under load. And this problem is almost cyclical. Make it smooth. Boom. You don't see it on the data here. It's not just counting up. It counts up to like, you know, maybe six or 10, and then it goes back to zero. How do you explain that? Is it possible that, for example, if there's a bad spot on the valve, on the exhaust valve, for example, and valves don't just open and close, they also rotate as they open and close. So if it's hitting that bad spot in the seat in the valve, and then buh, 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 and then it gets to a good spot, then you're fine. Very uncommon, actually I have not seen this before live on a vehicle. I've probably watched the video of Bernie Thompson like you know weird weird case study um, I want to put a cylinder trans pressure transducer in cylinder number four and just run the car and see if the pressure increases and decreases like the peak pressures that will definitely be a very good um, indicator that this is a compression problem you don't want to quote a customer tearing the engine apart if it's something else um, let's take it for a spin, see how it drives. But especially, you know, in high gear, under load, I want to see how it does. I don't know. This, like I said, this is a fun case study uh, doing it with misfires. Drive's fine, shift's fine. Let's get into lock up here. Are we recording any misfires under load? No, not at all. Runs super smooth. Yep, I mean, customer complaint definitely confirmed. Super smooth idle or um, under load at any speed, any gear. 
you wouldn't know there's a problem. Only when you're just standing there in park or in gear, boom, boom. Not consistent, but you would swear, you're, my gut feeling said like it's gotta be an ignition problem. No, it's, it's not, I mean, um, like you said, spark plugs, coils, not an issue, and it drives fine, so there's no, there's nothing that says that it's an, it's an ignition problem. So I'll take it back to the shop, put it in the pressure transducer, um, run it. What you could do is do a clear flood crank, so pedal to the floor and just listen. Once that stupid thing stops making sounds. All right, here we go. Pedal to the floor. Nope. I don't know, sounds super consistent, doesn't it? All right, here we go. Cylinder number four. I took the ignition coil off, unplugged the fuel injector, got the pressure transducer installed, 265 PSI unit, just one channel. Here's a scale, up to 135 PSI. Let's just run it, see what happens. So that fish bite misfire is definitely gone. Let's rev it up. I want to see something cyclical in the in the peak pressures there. So the engine is running, you know, the RPMs aren't changing. Okay, that's good data there. Now we can do this with another cylinder. Is there any loss during the compression stroke? Uh, it's hard to say. Hmm. Maybe a little bit right there. Not, not as clear as I'd like to see it. All right, so I moved to cylinder number three. Same setup, injector is disabled. Let's see if we notice any difference in the waveform. So on cylinder number four, notice that we were at about 65 PSI at idle on the peak. So let's roll the scope. Oh yeah. Definitely a difference. Well, let's let it stabilize.
So now that cylinder four is contributing, we see more oscillations because it's also misfiring. <laughs> So we're hitting 75 consistently here instead of 65. You can see on our misfire counters, cylinder three obviously is dead in the water, but cylinder four is still picking some up. You can see that. So let's back up to where it was pretty stable, like right here. You can see the peak pressure is about 75 psi instead of 65 psi like it was on cylinder number four. So very slight leakage out of cylinder number four and here on the bottom, you can see on cylinder number three, this pocket isn't going below the steady state vacuum at all. On cylinder number four, it was. So go ahead and try to pick that out with your manual compression gauge. I don't think you'll see anything. So what's, what's the diagnosis? Yeah, you need a valve job. But it drives fine, so just keep driving it until it gets worse. That would be my honest recommendation for this. Honestly, it's a beater, 250,000 miles on it. Basically a Chevy Cobalt. <laughs> um, so that's it. I'll, if the owner decides to do anything with it, I'll let you guys know. But that's the end of the diagnosis. Until next time, bye-bye. All right, a little bonus footage. So I want to do a cranking compression test, wide open throttle, and compare cylinder three to cylinder four. Cylinder three, we're hitting about 140 PSI very consistently. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do about 10 compression humps. Let's do the same thing on cylinder number four. All right, so that was cylinder number three. Wide open throttle. Instead of 140, stop the recording. We're about 130, and there it actually dropped to like 125, right on this hump. See that? Not as consistent, and right there. Poor valve sealing. That's so I like this test. So it's slow speed, high volume, it gives the gas more time to escape, and you can actually see you know the difference in in the peaks because the cranking is very consistent speed instead of running where the throttle body kind of adjusts the idle, you know, the idle speed, and that can definitely affect your peak pressure. So this is it. Cylinder number four is not quite sealing as well as it should. But I say keep driving it. And uh, I don't know, might make it another 100,000 miles. Who knows? All right, back to the Pontiac. Are we ready to call back compression at cylinder number four? I'm not. Even if it's five PSI difference, it shouldn't cause such a dramatic, noticeable misfire. Only in one cylinder, only at idle. What? are the other variables. You might say, hey, check for vacuum leaks at the intake manifold. That's a great suggestion. I did that when I was running. You can spray some WD-40 or propane or whatever around the intake port. Absolutely no difference. Now I want to flow test the fuel injectors. Even though the engine runs fine under load, if there's a discrepancy in flow between the injectors, 
you know, on one cylinder, is at those low pulse width at idle, it might be a substantial difference. So we got our electronic fuel injector pulser tool set up. There's power and ground. I got all the injectors unplugged. Let's turn the key on, prime the pump, see what the rest pressure is, then pulse each injector one at a time. So here the fuel pump prime. Now on a cold engine, this is the best time to do it since the fuel won't boil. So we're starting at 54, pulse the tool. About 29. I'm gonna write that down. Alright, here's cylinder number two. Twenty-eight PSI. Okay, I'm good with that. Cylinder number three. Okay, here's cylinder number three. On the money, twenty-eight PSI. Place your bets now. What are we going to see on cylinder number four? There we go. Oh, same. This is getting more and more interesting. No ignition problems. No vacuum leaks. Injectors flow identically. We still have a fish bite on number four. What would be your next step? And compression seems to be Seems to be fine. I didn't see anything that's drastically wrong on the pressure transducer. I don't know what my next check is. Alright, let's run this thing. Look at some basic OBD2 data. I want to see nice oxygen sensor, oscillations. I really don't know what would cause this. <laughs> we checked all the basics. It's a Chevy Cobalt. Pontiac, whatever. And the owner said it only happens when it's warm. Okay. Oxygen sensor is going up and down. Looks just fine. Let's just let it warm up, see what it does. All right, it's been a few minutes. And I can kind of see at the pants, start feeling that little boop, boop. This car is really interesting. All right, so looking at misfire counts, what the heck, one and three are misfiring? Yesterday it was four. That's crazy. Raise the RPMs just a little bit. Okay, that's nuts. Doesn't make any sense whatsoever to me.
There's no EGR valve, no variable cam timing on this thing. It should be pretty straightforward. This is the air injection, not worried about that. What? Checking for vacuum leaks. Using a smoke machine, just putting smoke into the intake manifold. This thing is tight. I mean, absolutely no leaks. You can see the. Obviously, it's going into the crankcase. Intake manifold is super tight. <laughs> Zero vacuum leaks. This car is crazy. It's insane. All right, next experiment. Two channels. Whoops. So I have a my vacuum transducer is kind of loosely stuffed in the exhaust pipe to feel the pressure pulses. I want to correlate those with the ignition coil firing event on cylinder number four. Is it only one cylinder that's misbehaving? You can clearly see whenever it poof, misfires, very clear signature on that waveform. It's pretty frequent, but not consistent. Not, not a constant dead misfire right there. Boom, boom. And you can feel the car shakes. So my question is, is it always the same cylinder? So I can, you can see it always occurs in between these two firing events. Now, which cylinder is this? This is firing for cylinder four. And it misfires. Do we get a bad exhaust pulse? This is exhaust for cylinder four. Certainly seems that way. It's it always occurs in between the cylinder four firing events. So let me save this and we'll see what the next logical step is. Alright, one more capture with another channel on the number four fuel injector. So you can see here is a misfire event. So basically what, what happens first? First you get fuel injected. You can see there's a nice pintle hump there. Then the ignition. So this is basically um, inject injection happens before the intake stroke. Then compression right here it fires and then on the exhaust we get this vacuum pocket because the mixture didn't burn when the exhaust valve opens there's actually a vacuum created in the tailpipe instead of a little compression peak see it's supposed to be like this and it goes boop down that's cylinder four misfiring so nothing wrong with our injector nothing wrong with our ignition it has to be compression so we could do is now pull number four spark plug out and put a, an actual in-cylinder you know, pressure sensor and see if this hump is basically occurs on every stroke. Why, why would the engine run fairly smoothly and sometimes misfire? That's why I don't understand. Okay, so I switched cylinder, or channel three to cylinder four uh, pressure. So we don't care about the injector anymore, actually unplugged it. So let's run 
the car. You see what happens here. Okay. Okay. So here's the in cylinder number four with the exhaust pulses. As you can see, where the exhaust pulse occurs, we have a negative pressure in the exhaust pipe. That's because you know there's vacuum in the cylinder, and then when the exhaust valve opens, it sucks the you know the, the air or the exhaust back into the cylinder. It's kind of counterintuitive. That's why the dollar bill in front of the tailpipe does a get sucked in. Um, this finally clicked for me in a John Thornton seminar. So, or is it Bernie Thompson? But anyways, you can see how deep that vacuum pocket is. Minus half a PSI. Let's go back to the intermittent misfire right here. You see this, eh, maybe minus three, minus point three psi. So you can feel it, but it's a lot less drastic than than this right here. This is a constant misfire, boom, 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 versus the intermittent misfire. But so what? What's the problem? We, do we have a definitive answer here? It has to be compression. Even though our in cylinder, you know, peaks at 75, there's nothing wrong, at least in this entire capture. Is there a intermittently poor, poorly sealing valve? I mean, like I said, I've never seen one. These look very, very consistent, don't they? What do you What do you tell the customer in this case? Just, I mean, just keep driving it until it gets worse, right? I'm sure people don't want to hear that. But all the data that we've collected, and they're still not conclusive. <clears throat> proof of what's wrong in this cylinder number four. We know it's cylinder number four. We just proved that with the intermittent exhaust pulse occurring on the cylinder four exhaust stroke. So cylinder four is not mis is not firing. Very intermittently. Like every let's see. How like how often does this happen? Boom, and then one, two, three, four, five, six firing events. There's two in a row. How could a valve not seal well once in a while? I mean, sometimes it's right there. Boom, and then you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten, twenty, thirty, forty engine revolutions before you see the next one. That's crazy. There's like a few in a row. That just blows my mind. So that's the end of the diagnosis. We could stick a bore scope in cylinder number four just to take a look at the seats. They'll probably look just fine. So, here's the bore scope. This is the front camera. There's the piston. Like I said, nothing, nothing crazy. Side view camera. There's an exhaust valve. 
Now we can spin the engine over until it's open. There's the other exhaust valve. They look clean, nice and brown. Doesn't look like it uses too much oil. You see the cross hatch on the cylinder walls. Let me just bump the engine over and we'll get those exhaust valves to open. All right, just using a jumper, got the valves to open. Are the seats looking really bad? Uh, I mean, not great. See, there's all kinds of pitting and crap, but you would think the problem would be more consistent. If it was due to bad seats. I'll try to get a better picture, but yeah, like right there looks kind of crappy. Just needs a valve job. So, take some pictures for the customer, let them know. But there's no sense in tearing this engine apart until it gets a lot worse, because the fix will be the same and might keep running like this for a long time. So. Appreciate everyone watching. Scientific data. You know, this was this is not an easy diagnosis by any means. You think it's a misfire, it's a Chevy, how hard can it be? The fact that A, it's intermittent, B, it's only at idle, so it screams low compression, but compression tester didn't show anything. Exhaust pulses are cool, so you can use the either the vacuum or the 265 PSI transducer in the tailpipe with a little adapter. Works great. Um, that's it. Thanks all for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.